Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of Generational Wrestling Podcast. As always, is yours truly, the 28-year-old piece of gold, the franchise, aka the showstopper, better known as the GOW's resident tribal chief. And with me, as always, I got the flash in the room, Mr. One, Two, Three. Pin that ass down, K Breezy, aka King Two Cold in the building, bro. It was good. Man, just making sure I ain't getting released. That's all. Yeah, man. Yeah. So again, <laughs> again, we had yet another batch of releases late last night, man. On behalf of WWE, and once again, the bullshit reasoning of the day of the week of the year of the month and for the rest of fucking eternity from Johnny Ace, according to uh Sean Rossap and many other outlets. The reason <laughs> being too cold. What is the reason this time? <laughs> Budget cuts. Budget cuts, budget cuts, the company that's getting billions and billions of dollars between fucking Saudi Arabia and Fox and, of course, USA. We are citing budget cuts as the reason, even though you are having one of the most profitable years in company history. Not just this year, but last year. The pandemic did a number on you financially, and it was a positive one. But we're going to continue to cite budget cuts. So, too cold, I guess this has nothing to do with Vinnie Mac, you know, bringing up hit row. Another NXT group, another group of people from NXT in the middle of a great run, in the middle of a storyline. Not only do you bring them up one week, then you release one member the next week. Then you have the other three members all over social media promoting the shit going on. WWE's the bump in the middle of the weekend. Then guess what? The day before a Friday night SmackDown, three days before your Survivor Series pay-per-view, what do you do? You release probably one of only groups that people actually have faith in that was left too cold and we're gonna blame it on budget cuts <laughs> so let me ask you this brother when you seen that hit row got released <laughs> i'm laughing because it hurts when you seen a hit row of all groups of all people got released man what was your thoughts <clears throat> that wasn't even the most shocking of them all no that was the most shocking of them all um everybody else john morrison uh Jason uh, uh Riker uh Drake Maverick uh Tegan Knox was a shocker uh yeah uh, not 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 no real big all oh, for them I mean not to say I didn't like John Morrison I did like him they wasted him they they they, they wasted his return cuz he could have did so much more um Drake Maverick he him coming back and having a good run in the cruiserweight division and then getting tagged Paired with uh, Killian Dane, and then Killian Dane ended up getting released. Just, just throw Drake back into the cruiserweight division. Uh, but no, they didn't do that. They put him back in the twenty-four or seven crap shit, and then um, he gets re-released again. Uh, Riker, eh, eh, eh. He, I mean, he, his was coming. His was coming. I uh, yeah, I, I honestly surprised he got he didn't get released before the other two people did. Uh, of that that used to be a uh, part of the uh, Lost Sons or the whatever the, the the Forgotten Sons that they used to run with. I'm surprised he didn't get released before those two guys did. But um, really, just the only people really like for Morrison because of how old he is. I'm glad he's out so he can go do other stuff somewhere else. Uh, right. It's really just Hit Row and Tegan Knox for me. That's really the like damn. Yeah. Uh, and, and nice. hit, but it rose so much more because it was already shocking that you let B Fab go, but you let yeah. him go go. And <clears throat> so the rumor is that there were besides budget cuts with hit row, they were a little different. So the rumor is they were creative. Uh, and like I said, this is just rumors. There were creative problems with hit row. Of, of course, there was creative differences. And then also some of the antics that's been going on online uh, as far as, you know, hit row, like Isaiah Swerve, Scott and Top Dollar doing a music thing. And Top Dollar, he's really been making waves because he's been dropping a couple controversial disses, even though, you know, I believe it's <laughs> nothing more than just entertainment. But, you know, for WWE and for people who don't come from that background, I guess maybe they thought maybe Top Dollar kind of took it a little too far. But at the end of the day, that's their whole gimmick, you know. So I don't really understand how them doing music outside of wrestling and them on TV rapping and freestyling anyways, any different. But I guess apparently WWE also felt that uh, 
their interests outside of wrestling were kind of hindering, you know, uh, them as actual wrestlers. But I don't, to me, I feel like that's bullshit. I feel like that's just something that they they picked up. It's like, okay, yeah, we're going to use this as an excuse. What do you think of that bullshit logic, considering so many other people do so many other things outside of WWE? It's bullshit, one. One, I mean, you know, I'd like Ginger didn't say anything about, you know, to Adonis. You know, it's not like he didn't talk about hit roll. Also, it was like no one said anything about what he's saying. But the stuff that Adonis said, like the the Steph Curry, the Curry line that he used, like <clears throat> that was bars. <laughs> hey, yeah. you know what it is, man. Do we? You know, he 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 was clever with it. And hey, man, you just you just got a bunch of just whiny piss ass people, man, who just made something more than what it was. Uh, man, it, 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 whatever, man. He's a rapping wrestler. All right. So what? It, what? What else is he gonna say? What else is he gonna do? He's gonna talk. Uh, man, what, get out of here, man. And WWE. That was just an excuse for them to let him go. Um, you were looking at Adonis. I mean, come on, man. There's been there. There are people who have far more issues or cause more trouble outside personally or whatever, and you continue to push them to the limit. It just seems like when it comes to certain types of people, you know, we can't do those type of things and we get released for it. And it's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's BS. Uh, but still, man, you they could have just stayed in NXT, but even if they stayed in NXT, man, they probably would have got let go. Like right now, Hit Row could be so high in NXT yeah. or this new 2.0. Like you could really let them – like really dominate and grow and get better and and develop their mic skills because that's what they needed to develop and their in ring skill. Scott was cool. Scott was the one out of the group we were all good with yeah. because we all knew what he could do. We knew Adonis and Top Dollar needed some work. We knew B Fab needed some work, which is why we were okay with them staying in NXT instead of getting called up to the main roster. But they got called up to the main roster and you didn't even really do anything with them. You didn't do anything with them at all. At all, man. You did a little BS stuff, but you didn't you didn't let them get out there. You didn't let the people see them. You didn't let them talk. You didn't let them really wrestle too much. Like, man, you 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 wasted these people and then you cut B Fab and then you finally let these guys go. And <clears throat> it sucks. And Tegan Knox, I mean, yeah, she had her injury issues, but she was healthy. She was back. She was ready to go. Uh uh, what's going on, Chris? Uh well, uh, you know, and 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 and, and it was um it, it, it was it, it was it was messed up, man. Because I wanted to see what she was gonna do. Her and uh, Shashi Blackheart should be the women's tag team champions right now. Like they've won so many opportunities. They beat them like two or three times. They should they should be tag team champions right now. But you 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 decided to keep the titles on Natalia and Tamina, which. Uh, which uh, was you know, and, and the crazy part is, the, I, I and the thing is with Shotzi, I mean, well, Tegan Knox, I should say, excuse me, dude, how the hell do you release a number one contender <laughs> without giving them a shot like that? That, that to me, I, 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 I bro, I, I can't even try to pretend like I have the words to even try to stick up for this bullshit man i mean at this point you know I i've said it earlier on our uh on our facebook page i mean we've been saying this for weeks uh unfortunately because of what we do we kind of got to stay in the loop on what's going on with raw and smackdown but you know for me it is getting extremely 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 hard man to, 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 to stay a fan right and i'm not gonna be one of those people like oh you should boycott wwe i mean i mean i'm gonna I'm still keep in touch with it because let's be honest CM Punk, he did have a point. I'm going to go back to this. The wheel going to keep spinning. You know, Vince McMahon is still going to make money spite himself. There's still going to be people you want to see. I get that. But it is hard, man, to stay invested. Like, SmackDown's coming up in about 12 minutes, and SmackDown has actually been a pretty solid show for the last year, year and a half. And I'm honestly not even excited, man, to watch it because it's like, dude, it's like I don't want to see some shit I like, 
and I get invested. Oh man, I can't wait to see where this match goes after Survivor Series. Or I can't wait to see where this rivalry goes. Or oh, they're gonna bring somebody up I ain't seen in a while, like Tony Storm. Dude, we've been pleading since July 23rd when Tony Storm came up to Friday Night SmackDown in Cleveland, Ohio, at the Rocky Mortgage Fieldhouse. Bro, we knew that Tony Storm was on the rise, was on the come up. One of the first shows in front of fans, we were like, God damn it, WWE is finally gonna give it to us. Then we haven't seen Tony for a while. Now you got all these releases. I'm scared to get excited for you know Tony Storm being the Survivor Series because she could get released right after. <laughs> she could have you a know? great out and then like yep well budget cuts we'll see <laughs> good luck to you and <clears throat> I, yeah we gotta do the predictions tonight we're gonna do it later tonight oh fuck I, 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 I gotta I gotta we gotta see exactly what they're gonna do for Sunday like whatever I, I have a feeling I'm, I'm gonna say whatever they advertise is what they're gonna actually go with but it's WWE is subject to change in 30 seconds. So, um, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean, me and you could get fired right during this podcast. We don't know yet. <laughs> uh, so, you know, th- th- this is crazy, man. But I, man, I, I'm upset, man. And when you think about what NXT is doing and how people are crapping on what they did this past week, it's like, man, you you ruined the one thing people really like. Yeah. We get what you're trying to do, but you're not really you, you're you're not really doing anything to boost you. It's it's you've turned NXT into the main roster. <laughs> like like NXT is now. NAC is now the main roster, man. I don't, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. We're no longer doing reviews for NXT now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying it now, man. We're, we're doing reviews. We're not, we're not showing up. I'm not wasting my time for. I'm not wasting my time like that. I, I will, we'll do them the next day. We're gonna do Raw the next day on Tuesday. We'll do NXT on Wednesdays. We'll keep AEW live. We'll keep SmackDown live. We'll keep Rampage live. But. <clears throat> Nah, man, I'm done. I'm cool. I'm good. I, I maybe in time things will get better. I gotta see, but I, I have no faith in what WWE is doing right now because I don't know who the hell is gonna be left. I don't know who the hell they're gonna show. I don't know what they think you you finna do. I, yeah, I, I'm. Mm. Hey, man, well look. Look, 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 look. We, 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 we can sit up here. We can mope about WWE all day, man. Fuck that. We'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's talk a little bit of AEW, man, because, you know, we got AEW coming up, man. So, Tuco, man, are you excited for tonight, man? AEW, uh, what's this? We got Rampage tonight. So, you know, we got Jay Cargill, of course, versus, you know what I'm saying, the chef herself, uh, Red Velvet and the TBS uh, tournament quarterfinals. Man, Tuco, man, what are you thinking? What's your thoughts on this? I think I know who you're going with, but are you still excited to see this match nonetheless? Uh, I'm just I'm just excited to see Jade smash through uh Red Velvet. Real Velvet's cool, but you know, she alright. You know, I ain't I ain't too hyped on Real Velvet. So uh I say it being an easy win for Jade. Um <clears throat> but it's another match that's happening tonight. Um We got Darby Allen versus the ass man Billy Gunn. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, okay. sir. And now we got a heel Billy Gunn. We got we le- we legitimately have the badass Billy Gunn. So too cold, man. I think this is going to be a surprisingly. I think this match is going to surprise us. We ain't really seen too much of Billy on uh. The I don't really expect it to be that long either. I don't really expect it to be too much. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, I see this probably. I can kind of see why Rampage right. ratings are going down just for certain matches. Uh, this this is a dark match uh, to me. This is. This ain't something I want to see on Rampage. Uh, if it was somebody else, sure, maybe. But I, I, the Gun Club? Nah. You could have did this on Dark. Revelation. You could have did this. <laughs> And then next up, uh, the last match, we got Adam Cole and we got Bobby Fish reuniting, going up against Jungle Express. That's, now, this one, that's what I'm this doing. one right here, I'm telling you now, Tony Khan, I love you. 
And I know you like to put the main event on first on Rampage for whatever reason. I get it. But given the card you have now, I think the best bet would be to go get MJ, uh, not MJF, Darby Allen, put them on first, get them, get them out the way, have the women be the co-main event because you're only going to do like three matches anyway. But you got to finish this off. I mean, you got to have Adam, not, God damn it. Yeah, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. It's got to be them versus Jungle Express in the main event. I think that's the only way you can do this card tonight. Uh, what do you think, man? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. It's only an hour show. We'll go through it and, and we'll give our review and then yeah, we'll be done tonight. But, yeah, man. I Like, Rampage is cool. I, you know, it's you know, something to look forward to. After watching SmackDown and not, and not really sure what they're going to give us for two hours. Uh, so you kind of get something a little better. But I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like they'll have a few little things that'll go well. Um, whatever the Big East, Roman Reigns, even though they haven't really done anything really all leading up to Survivor Series, all, all the way up, really until now. They, you know, Big E right. saying what they said on Monday and then what they're going to do tonight. That's really all the interaction you had. It's really been about Xavier Woods and and, and Kofi, you know, but it, we understand why they, they, they split up the New Day, but um. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm just going through the motions, man. I I still like SmackDown. Um, so I I definitely want to see what it is. It's the go home show. Right, right. I man, I don't. I, man, yeah, I got yeah, yeah. We're just gonna have to watch and see. <laughs> That's... I mean, no, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, this is, this is one of those, those, you know, those rare times, man, where it just kind of like, all right, you know what? The burnout is real. The burnout is real. Uh, I never thought I would say in my life that there is too much. Re- I'm not even gonna say it's too much wrestling. I'm gonna say for one week there's too much bullshit in wrestling. <laughs> like you said, I mean, Darby Allen versus Billy Gunn, eh? Like, do I think it's going to be better than anticipated? Sure. Is Billy Gunn 2021 who I want to see in a singles match against Darby Allen? No. So you're right there. Like you said, Red Velvet, Jay Cargill. I think it would be a little more interesting if we kind of didn't really know because AEW is unpredictable for the most part. But I think we all know that Jay is going to end up pretty much winning this one decisively. Like you said, Friday Night SmackDown. Hard to really get excited for it. You almost don't even remember that it's a – fucking pay-per-view this weekend uh two days away to be exact like you said so yeah man i mean i, I feel you i feel you you're not the only one man. i think you and i are both going through the motions I'm i mean and plus i mean you know for AEW, you know they just had a pay-per-view so you know <clears throat> i expect this to be the 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 cool down you know restart for them you know moving forward because um, right I, I i have the the process of thinking because i was watching a uh, russell talk uh, a little earlier, mm-hmm. uh, and they had kind of and and they had pointed something out that Daniel Bryan is fighting all of the people in a dark order uh, for the next few weeks who are actually from those hometowns. And, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And, yeah. and you know, and that's that's a good way to build up Daniel Bryan versus uh, Page uh, for the TBS debut when they when they switch over. And I'm like, oh, that yeah. would. Actually kind of nice and then they could build that story they could take this time to build that story up that would actually be good because that would be that's going to be that that oh, that would be a really great match and they'd also thought that they could do the same thing for mjf and cm punk i'm like oh so that means you know, give me a couple of weeks before we get the 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 the, the, the infamous pro bowl the promo hype bomb that we're going to get between mjf and cm punk because you know they're going to talk some shit to each other so <clears throat> right now for AEW, I'm okay, you know, with the not so much star power match. <clears throat> giving some guys a little time off, rest and heal, but you know, still giving you some, you know, some star power. Uh, but for the next couple of weeks, and plus with the holidays being next week, they're gonna do a little something yeah. for that. You know, uh, and they'll probably tape, they'll probably tape Rampage, which is fine, uh, because it's the holidays. But when December start, when 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 we get to next, when we get to the week after that, that's when they're going to start right. the, the the process to get ready for that TBS premiere, and they're going to hype up that Hangman versus Daniel Bryan, uh, Bryan Danielson, especially after that promo they had yesterday. So, 
Yeah, man. No, I'm I'm fine with the I'm fine with the little cool down period right now. You know, you take a week, you know, next couple of weeks, you're going to start building up some new stories. You got Jay Lethal. He had a great match with Sammy Guevara. Yeah. Got him then being there. Uh, <clears throat> so now with, you know, yeah, it's time to it's time to build. It's time to it's time to move forward with a few things and, and see where things go. And speaking of that, man, also, I want to give a shout out, man, to the AEW, former AEW world champion, Kenny Omega. Uh, man, my boy, our, our boy, I should say, man, he's been wrestling banged up for a very, very long time. Uh, he said that had multiple surgeries to kind of get his body together. Tony Khan expects uh, him to be back around uh, the end of February or around that time frame, but has told everybody, man, Kenny is free to take as much time he needs. And when you think about it, the man had, what, three or four championships he was defending around the world at the same damn time. So Kenny Omega, the cleaner, former champion, champion of champions, man. Hey, shout out to you. Congratulations, brother. You did great uh, as a fan, man. It's all love. <clears throughs> and yeah, too cold, man. We're getting ready to get laced up for SmackDown. Like I said, we got Rampage and hopefully – uh. Hopefully, when we come back out here, man, we 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 have something to make us a little more joyous. But uh, yeah, man. For right now, like you said, we just going through the motions, dog. And uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a it's a quiet Friday night. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really it is. But as far as Mega is concerned, um, I'm okay with him taking six months off. Like, dude, take <laughs> time off. Like, I want him to properly be healed. I want him to get his, as as. Yeah. Much- as much healing time as he needs to be, you know, to be, you know, to be right, right. Like, I don't want him to come back and be rushing it and, you know, something gets worse. Nah, take your time. Yeah. You've been going strong. And that's a- You've been going strong for two years, dude. Like, like even even though, you know, for at the start of AW, you, you only wrestled a little bit. But then once you started, once you started, you've been going. Yeah. You, you've been going. Yeah. And, and then once you won the belt. You and all one of all these other belts. You've been wrestling in all these other promotions and all these other people. So now nah, I'm I'm okay if Kenny Omega don't come back to damn near uh, all out. Like I, I I like if Kenny Omega stayed off TV until all out or not not all out, but maybe past WrestleMania or up to WrestleMania time. I like say he came back around. Right, that. right. Like that would be cool too. But knowing that he got some time to heal. You know, and and be ready to go, and and can be the guy that people expect him to be. Then yeah, and he and he wants to come back, and he's ready to come back to do it. Yeah, well, you know that take your time. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, <clears throat> SmackDown is getting ready to come on. I don't know why, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know why as soon as that, that that damn logo came on, I wanted to turn my TV off. <laughs> man, because they because I man, I look, they're supposed to be a tag team battle a, royal. I was gonna pick hit row. I can't even pick hit row, so I don't even know what's going on. That's why I, I ain't even got my TV on. Wait, yet. wait, wait. It was supposed to be a tag team battle royal. Yeah. Wow. See, I, I don't know why I thought about that. I was Okay, now that really just annoyed the fuck out of me because you know if Hit Row when it got released they would have been ah okay, all right, okay yeah could have got time they got could have got right. somebody to shine and have a little fun but I don't know man we'll see what happens uh all let's right. get out of here I can turn this thing on and we'll see y'all about nine thirty nine forty whatever the main whatever that main advantage time y'all know how we do. You already know, man. Like my man said, man, the 28-year-old piece of go here, hollering live and direct, my boy Two Code, and we'll see y'all in a minute. Peace.